Well, let's see what the trestle's like again. <laughs> Gee, it's been half an hour since I was here. But through the magic of video editing, it's not just half an hour later, it's next video later. Hey, welcome to part two of my hike. This is the inbound leg from this trestle at milepost 25, all the way back to the Loon Lake Forest Service Road. Here's the big picture of my hike location, Vancouver Island on the west coast of British Columbia. And the red circle is the specific location, just northeast of the city of Port Alberni. Here's the railway map and the Port Alberni subdivision of the ENN railway goes from right to left, Parksville to Port Alberni. And again, the red line is the area of my hike, just on the west side of the Port Alberni summit. And here's a close in view of the map with Port Alberni on the left side and the summit on the bottom right. And you can see my starting point on the red line is the bottom right hand corner at the Loon Lake Forest Service Road, just near the new campground there. And the top left of the red line is mile 25.1 or so, just past the trestle. And that's my turnaround point of my hike. Total hike was 2.9 miles each way. Hey, that works out to be about 9.3 kilometers return. That was a good workout for me. And because I have so many interesting items in my video, and because I want you to have a manageable fun time watching it, I need to break this into two separate videos. And it breaks apart nicely. Part one is from my start to my turnaround point. Part two, logically, is from my turnaround point back to my starting ending point at Loon Lake. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoy this. This is part two, my inbound leg from the trestle back to the parking area. A few years ago in December, I uh, walked from this end to the other on the ground just to see what it was like from below and that's where I saw how bad the condition of the supports was. Sun is starting to peak out that way. Takes a while to climb over the hills. This gives you an idea of the fire barrel platform. Barely hanging on. Here comes the sun. So that's the timber that is weak. And if you follow it there, and then it goes right out. That's the one that doesn't support this well anymore. Okay, standing at the edge. Yeah, I think play 
time here is over. There's the sun. This trestle is fairly typical of trestles that haven't been used or maintained for over 20 years. Up top on the deck, a lot of the ties are soft and crumbling and rotting, and there are places where people have attempted their own repairs to bridge the gap between ties, either to allow them to ride bikes or some sort of wheeled vehicle over, or just because they need a bit of help getting across the gap. Keep in mind that there are stringer beams below the ties running parallel with the rails. Those are the thick beams that support the ties and you should be walking above those beams if you're walking on an old unmaintained trestle. Well this allows me a bit of a fun time here, this gap. I go down with the camera into the trestle, into this gap, see what it looks like. Well, while looking deep inside the trestle, <laughs> I was bending over and my water bottle fell out of my backpack. So I'm gonna go down there and rescue it. This is what things look like. Counted the bents. It's on the sixth bent. So here's the first one, and that gives you an idea of what the foundation is. It's just, they're all just resting on rotted wood, which is not great. Such as right down there. So bent one beside me. Be fun coming back up. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, and six. And there it is, resting against bent six. I'm on the upslope side of the trestle. Coming back, thinking this will be easier, but probably not. I'll try going up there, see what happens. I just came from there. Yeah, 
There's two more bents this way. It's just slow going because of all the growth. Unevenness, but mainly as I'm old and slow. Hey, there's the first bent there. This is what things look like where I am. And a bunch of leaves going westward. That's what I'm standing on. These are the wooden uh, foundations of this trestle structure. Some of them are in better shape than others. Here's the foundation. And there's one that's better, better. <laughs> and there's the end of signpost. I have no idea what the sign would have said. At this end, the 25 post is at the other end. Maybe it's a whistle sign because you're coming up to Lacey Lake. Okay, back up here. Nice photo right here. Well, until next time, whenever that will be. Now, carefully to go back into this broom, just for a short bit. And here's the spot where the landslide almost undermines the grade. Here's the rail. You can see the extent of it. I'll switch to wide angle. Okay, until next time in the fall. And hopefully the rails haven't fallen. Oh, bad puns are the worst. Okay, coming to the place where the Alberni Lookout Trail crosses over the railway. Being it's a weekend morning, there's usually a chance I see some fitter than me hikers. That could be describing any hiker. That's where I came from. Yeah, that's really a railway. And to get away from the broom in this last bit, let's go this way. This is that time of my hike where I've gotten all the interesting things for video and photographs on my outbound leg. And now it's just the mile posts and highlights and the unexpected like bears or cougars uh, to get now. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Squishy mud. where Lacey Lake Road goes down to Highway 4. So it goes down to a little access road. And this rock is my traditional stop and rest place. Okay, finished here at my break spot. 
let's keep walking eastward on the railway or easier on what used to be the Stokes siding and Lacey Lake Road is just up there this is the time where I do the thank you shout out to people watching this video I appreciate that I appreciate you taking time to watch things that I enjoy and have made and if you're a subscriber thank you very much as well that helps me out hey the day could come where I get monetized through YouTube uh, maybe by the end of 2023 we'll see it all depends on how many hours get watched which is just something you just work on building up over time and uh, I'd also like to thank those people who are subscribers who are also youtubers <laughs> you know what it takes uh, you create content yourself I'm thinking of my buddy Brent his channel is Brent's van life one of my favorites uh, he has a schoolie that's a short school bus that he lives in he also has a VW bus and he takes you for adventures as he shows you what it's like to travel what it takes to simply live so here comes the end of the Stokes siding oh, just nice simple walking now I'm in the area that the fiber optic project had done brushing work so no more broom no more obstacles yeah nice Okay, end of Stokes Siding. Lacey Lake Road goes up the hill there. Nice grassy area for the railway. Again, it's May 21st, so there's a lot of growth. More to come. So up on the right, I climbed up there last time I did this hike. And if you went straight, instead of curving on the railway to the left that's where the original grade would have crossed a uh, creek ravine gully on a trestle and in 1971 instead of rebuilding the trestle they dismantled it and changed the grade rerouted it so it will hug the side of the slope in a tight curve that's what I've read in my history books and this is the evidence that I see I occasionally like to go off rail this is one of those places I keep coming back to again the area where the pre-1971 grade came through and went down I'm not going to go much further than this but there's a stump straight ahead that's just a chopped off piling from the trestle and the trestle would have just gone down the slope you can see a built up area below that piling and as the slope continued to fall the trestle would just get taller and go across the ravine keep saying that sometime I'm gonna go down there and explore when I'm in better shape uh, because of that thing called coming back up but I'm pretty sure I'll find more wood uh, piles chopped off like that and who knows what else I'm always hopeful to find some metal work and in this area there is some old rails that used to be on the trestle but for now just enough for me to see it again here and uh, keep my curiosity going for next time yeah I'm in the curve of the rerouted line this is a good time to say that the winds going pretty good I can feel it and hear it but I'm hopeful that you're not hearing the wind 
So I've got a, a big windscreen on my microphone. One of those ones that's called a dead cat. That's what they call it. There's some very colorful rocks here on the left. This always makes me really happy to see. Give you a wide angle here. <laughs> a wide angle caused by me walking towards the woods. Yeah, that was worth the stop. On the right here, about mile 24.1, here's flagging for a trail that comes up <laughs> with a bit of a rope assist. Yes. Where does that go down to? Uh, somewhere on the... Uh, western side of the Highway 4 uh, summit descent into Port Alberni. Hey, for those of you who like to have poop in a group, here's a well-organized pile that the cougar did. With a view to milepost 24. Silly me on the way in, I thought the mile post was missing because I thought it was further down and I couldn't see it because of the maple leaves blocking it from the other side. But there it is. Yeah, nice to see mile posts. They remind me that this is a railway. That's what it's still owned and held as and it could be used again. I'm hoping that that happens, um, but lots of things would need to come together for that to happen. It could, um, and I'd be very happy to see trains run here again. And now I'm at the next place where the grade was revised in 1971, and a trestle was bypassed and the trestle removed here on this tight corner. Looking back at where I came from, I'm in the middle of the curve, so that's where I'm going. So the first time I was ever in this area was four years ago, and I walked up the steep Lacey Lake Road, and then I wanted to explore down here as I had read about the old trestle sites and the, the sharp curve reroute that I'm on right now. Uh, and I got about as far as this corner and there was just too much overgrowth. And looking back through there, that's where the grade would have been straight through. And uh, things were sure a lot overgrown then. On a clear day, you can see Mount Aerosmith from here, up above the trees. But today is not that day. I really like this spot. I'm looking back westward. I like all the mineral stains on the rock. Nice. Here's a long tangent. I'm looking back to where I just came from and walking in here. Got a curve to the right with some mossy rocks. That tells me that I'm coming up to milepost 23 just around the corner. And here we are, mile 23. Nice simple post. One of the few that I've seen that's on a wood post instead of on some metal stake. Okay, keep going. I can hear the highway below me on the right. Highway 4, that's where it's making its descent off the Alberni summit.
The Alberni Summit on the railway, Lockhart Keg, is about mile 21. So I just passed mile 23. You can do the math. And uh, it's really just a pretty straight railway grade between here and there at the summit. Go past Loon Lake and a big swamp and Summit Lake. And then just after mile 21, it takes a curve to the left and starts to work its way down a 2.2% grade. Yeah, that's steep. That's for another hike. I love this area. It's cool, shady, lots of green, and of course, this rock face. Really like it. And into the sun, here we are, the last curve before Loon Lake Forest Service Road at mile 22.2, my start and end point. That's how you have fun. Here we are, bright sunshine, about 10.30, five hours after I started. Loon Lake Forest Service Road, mile 22.2. Campground is up through there. Probably busy because it's a long weekend. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate you. Oh yeah. This is a special place. And the water goes through a tunnel. This here is a retaining wall built by the railway. What they decided to do is, I think originally the creek went that way and it probably crossed under a trestle. Then they decided to divert the creek and I think it was because there was a lot of solid rock there that they were able to bore a tunnel through the rock and the creek could flow through that. So not a culvert, but a tunnel.